Greetings, friends. My name is Reverend Zach Morton. I serve as pastor at First Presbyterian Church of Morgantown, West Virginia. And I want to welcome you to our ecumenical Good Friday virtual video service today as we commemorate the events of Holy Week together. I'm grateful that we've worked together with many other faith leaders and congregations across our community of Morgantown to be able to bring you this service and share what is called a tenebrae service with you. This has become somewhat of a tradition over the last few years, and we're happy to keep it going. And so I want to remind you that a tenebrae service is a service of reading and of music and of diminishing light. So you'll notice there's different candles lit on the table today. There's 12 of them signifying the 12 disciples. Every time we read a scripture, the reader is going to extinguish one of the candles, and it symbolizes both the ever-growing darkness of the service and of the events that go on with Jesus' betrayal and arrest and crucifixion, and also a reminder of the different ways that Jesus was kind of abandoned and left to himself during the service and the loneliness and isolation that that suffering brings. The service has, of course, a decidedly somber tone, and it's going to end in silence. So what I want to encourage you to do is to just sit back, maybe light your own candle, have it there with you, and at the ready at the end of the service, you can blow it out along with us. And the point is to just sit and reflect and revisit the story, allow the words of the gospel and the words of this music to feel them deeply in your spirit and remember this important story on this important of days. And in darkness and silence and reflection of Christ's suffering and even of our own suffering, that we trust that God will meet us there in that place, in those moments of the deepest dark. So I thank you for joining us for this Good Friday, and I hope the service will be a blessing to you. Thanks for joining us, friends. The Passion of Jesus Christ. Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave to me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword in its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup? which the Father has given to me. John 18, 12 to 18. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authority seized Jesus 
and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are you not one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. Yeah. 
priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing by a fire and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of the disciples? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest then, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off in the garden, asked, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled but might be able to eat at Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves. Judge him by your own law. The religious authority said to Pilate, It's not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die.
The Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 40. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say this to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have humbled, have handed you over to me, what have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, the servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. Thank you. 
Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priests then said to Pilate, Don't write the king of the Jews, but this man said I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
John 19, 23 to 30. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on the hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Reading 10, the Gospel of John, chapter 19. Verses 31 through 37. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced.
The next reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 19. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in that place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. 